Hello all, my name is Ashutosh Dastogi. I am a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education for all. For that purpose, I am creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, in our last lecture, we were discussing about various analog pulse modulation techniques. So before we start various digital pulse modulation techniques, we need to discuss one important concept that is your quantization process. Just because without quantization, we cannot convert our analog signal to the digital one. So let us discuss what is quantization process. So these are the outlines of today's lecture. We'll start up with the introduction where we'll try to devise up the actual need of quantization. Then we'll discuss the basic definition of quantization. Then we'll discuss few basic terms such as what is quantization levels and quantization zones. Then finally, we're going to conclude with the discussion of various types of quantization. So digital system basically possess so many advantages in comparison to analog communication systems. We had already discussed what are they such as digital systems will going to possess more noise immunity. We can secure our system well in comparison to our analog communication system. Apart from that, they are easy to process as most of the digital signal processors. There are so many other benefits too, which we had already discussed. So basically digital systems needs digital information to process. Obviously, if our processor is digital, then it cannot process the analog information. In order to process the information, it needed a digital information. But most of the available information sources are analog in nature. So anyhow, we must have to convert our analog signal to the digital signal. So we had already discussed that sampling process provides us the basis to convert our analog signal to the discrete signal. Discrete signal are those signal which are actually defined at some specific interval of times and rest of the places they are undefined. So discrete signals is still not digital signals. So discrete signals are defined only at specific instant of times and the value of the signal where the discrete signal is not defined are infinite. Here infinite doesn't means that between two sample values the signal value will become infinite. We are saying that the possible value of the signal in between two samples will lie in between its maximum and minimum value. But the possible states might be infinite. We'll try to discuss it via some example. So what do you mean by the infinite value of the signal? Let us say that this is our continuous analog signal. And after sampling, what do we get is like this one. So this signal will be considered as the discrete type of signal. What I'm trying to say is if we try to find out the exact value of my signal in between these duration in this duration, which is shown by this color, then what will be the approximated value of that particular signal. So obviously this particular signal value will going to lie in between the maximum and the minimum value of the signal. But the point is what will be the exact value. It could be of anything just because we are dealing with the time varying signal. So let us suppose that this topmost value of my signal is one volt and this is your two volt. In this particular example, we could consider that the value will going to lie between one to two. But what will be the exact value in between one to two? It could be 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1 up to two. Or we could say that it could be 1.11, 1.12 or 1.13 or even 1.14 up to 1.99. Or we could say that this exact value could be 1.111, it could be 1.112, it could be of anything. So I mean there we have infinite set of signal values. So we have to convert this infinite set of signal values to the finite set of signal values so that we could easily approximate our signal. So this is what we mean by our infinite value of the signal. So hence there is a need to represent infinite value of the signal to the finite set of levels 
in order to convert our discrete signal to the digital signal. So again question arises is how can we do that? So the solution is the quantization process. So this is actually what we are doing in the quantization process. So representing the analog sample value by a finite set of levels is actually called as your quantization. So if we consider that this particular example, this figure is actually showing the continuous time value of the signal. In y-axis, we'll be having a varied amplitude and x-axis, we'll be having time. So it is our time varying amplitude of my signal. So sampling results in a series of pulses of varying amplitude values ranging between the two limits. So if we're going to perform sampling, so what we're going to have is we'll be going to have a series of pulses like this one, this one, this one, which actually ranges between a maximum value and the minimum value. So the amplitude values are infinite between the two limits. We had already discussed why we are calling it as the infinite limits. So we actually need to map those sampled and infinite amplitude values into the finite set of known values so that we can approximate our signal or we could digitize them. So we need to map these infinite amplitude values into the finite set of known values so that we could digitize our analog signal. So this is actually achieved by dividing the complete distance between the minimum and the maximum values into L zones each of height delta. What we're actually going to do is we're going to divide this complete amplitude ranges into L number of zones where the amplitude separation between two consecutive zones is delta. The delta is being given as maximum value of the signal minus minimum value of the signal divided by total number of zones in which we have actually divided our signal. So the midpoint of each zone is assigned to the value from 0 to L minus 1 which it's actually resulting in the L values. Here L is actually representing the levels. So the resulting L values lies in the limit of the signal variation with equal amplitudes. Obviously the difference between any two consecutive levels is equals and is equal to delta which has been defined by this particular equation. So each sample falling in a zone is then approximated to the value of the midpoint. So I mean what we're going to do is we just need to find out our sample values in which zone it is actually lying and we'll going to approximate that sampled value to the midpoint of that zone in order to approximate that signal. So let us quickly understood it with the figure. So this particular figure actually showing the sampled version of my signal. These are the sample values. This pinkish color pulses are actually showing my sampled version of the signal and this black color is actually showing the analog portion. So right now we are operating over the these sampled signals. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide them into L number of levels. Then we're going to number them at the mid portion of the levels such as 0, 1, 2 up to L minus 1. The zone height between any two levels is delta which has been given by maximum value of the signal minus minimum value of the signal divided by total number of levels in which we have divided our amplitude values. So let us quickly understood with a numerical example. If we consider the last figure, let us suppose that the maximum value of my signal is plus 5 volt and minimum value is minus 3 volt. And if you want to use 8 quantization levels, then what will be the value of step size delta that will be given as maximum value that is your plus 5 volt minus minimum value that is your minus 3 volt divided by 8 number of quantization levels which turns out to be 5 plus 3 by 8 that is turns out to be 1. So the 8 zones will going to lie between minus 3 to minus 2 then the second zone will going to lie in between minus 2 to minus 1 then third one is minus 1 to 0 and so on and the last zone will going to lie between plus 4 volt to plus 5 volt. This is what we are trying to say. So the midpoints of these zones are obviously if we are dealing this particular zone minus 3 to minus 2 the middle portion will be minus 2.5 then minus 2 
to minus 1 the middle portion will be minus 1.5 and so on so what will be the middle value of plus 4 to plus 5 that turns out to be your plus 4.5 so now quickly review what of whatever we have studied so far we'll be having a sampled value then we'll going to assign those value into l number of zones with step size delta the signal variation will lie between minus 3 to plus 5 volt then we'll going to number out those zones mid obviously middle portion of the levels that is first one is your 0 1 2 and up to n minus 1 where l is 8 so l minus 1 turns out to be your 7 middle portion so these middle portion will going to represent our approximated value of our signal what we actually wanna do is we'll just going to refer this sample value and try to find out in which particular zone it is lying as this particular sample is lying in between this particular zone so if we actually want to approximate this particular signal what will going to pass or what amplitude that will going to assign to this particular sample value is the middle portion of minus 3 and minus 2 that it turns out to be minus 2.5 volt so i mean if any sampled value lie in this particular zone the approximated value of that particular signal will be equal to minus 2.5 volt similarly if any signal value lies in this particular zone in this particular zone then the approximated value that we're going to provide for that sample value that turns out to be minus 1.5 volt and so on so now in order to digitize our uh, sampled value the final procedure final stage is assigning codes to zones so what we're going to do is we're going to assign each zone a binary code so that we could convert our sampled value to the digital signal so number of bits required to encode the zones or the number of bits per sample is being obtained as follows that is nb is equal to log base 2 l where nb represents the number of bit required to encode a particular sample since we have to convert our information data into the binary digits so the different bits that we could use to encode any signal is 0 or 1 so obviously with the help of 0 and 1 if we have to encode different levels or we have to generate different codes then they will be the combinations of zeros and one and for unique or distinct combinations we must have to use this particular equation for example suppose we'll be having four different levels and we must have to encode them or code them into the distinct sequences so what are the various possible codes are they are 00 01 10 and 11 these are four distinct combinations that we could provide to different levels similarly in this particular case also we are going to provide distinct codes to distinct levels so they are governed by this particular equation so for our given example nb is equal to 3 that is number of bits required to encode a particular level is equal to 3 since we have 8 possible states or levels after putting the value of l is equal to 8 will be having log base 2 into 2 to the power 3 so 3 log base 2 the base 2 that turns out to be your 3 that is we required 3 number of bits to encode each level so the 8 zones or levels codes are there for 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 and so on up to 1 1 1 so now we are going to assign those codes to the zones that is the zone in between minus 3 to minus 2 we will going to assign 0 0 0 then minus 2 to minus 1 we will going to assign 0 0 1 and so on so let us quickly discuss whatever we have done so far initially we will be having a continuous time signal analog signal we have sampled them and get these pink color pulses we will going to divide this particular sampled values into equally spaced zones where the spacing between any two levels is equal to delta which has been given as peak value of my signal minus minimum value of my signal divided by total number of levels in which we are dividing our 
complete amplitude values or complete signal variation then what we're going to do is we're going to number those zones 0 1 2 3 up to 7 obviously if you are taking l number of zones that is 8 and we are incorporating 0 value so the count will start from 0 and it will end at 7 so it will complete counting at your at 8 number of levels then what we're going to do is we're going to map this signal values its minimum value is minus 3 and peak value is plus 5 volt then what we're going to do is we're going to find out the middle values of each zone and then try to approximate that middle value with the sampled value in a specific zone in which it is lying then what we're going to do is we're going to assign these middle values with the codes suppose for if a particular for this particular zone we are assigning codes 0 0 0 i mean if any sample value will going to lie in this particular zone we will going to assign codes 0 0 0 to that sample value similarly if any sample value will going to lie in this particular zone we will going to encode them or provide code with 0 0 1 similarly if any sample value will going to lie in this particular zone then we will going to assign code 101 and if it is lying in this particular zone then we will going to apply code as 111 so this is how we actually perform our quantization process so the next topic is type of quantization what are various different types of quantization so there are basically two types of quantization process number one is your uniform quantization and second one is your non-uniform quantization as the name suggests in uniform quantization the value of sample size delta will remain same it will become it will never get changed whereas in non-uniform quantization the value of step size get changed we'll take them into greater details in the upcoming lectures what are the various advantages as well as disadvantages associated with the uniform and non-uniform type of quantization so the type of quantization in which the quantization levels are uniformly spaced that is the step size value delta is fixed is being considered as a uniform quantization and the type of quantization in which the quantization levels are unequal or you could say that the step size delta is variable it is not at all fixed that is being known as your non-uniform quantization these are the references thank you very much for your patient hearing